Okay, I've started using my fine brush. There it is there, with a bit of titanium white on it. And I work around these areas here. Now, I can't do it while I'm holding this camera, so but that gives you an idea of uh, how I use the Series 7. I'm not sure, it's a zero. There you go. If you can see that. Series 7, zero, Windsor and Newton. Now, that was expensive, but believe me, it is worth the money. So I'm going to go back to it now. Okay, so that's progressing. I'll just show you something else that I like to use. I, I like to use a paper toweling, which is very easy, especially if you're painting in oils, which I'm not doing today, but if you are, that really is very handy to have. I'm just cleaning my, my brush here, from just in water. Acrylics are great for that, you don't need any turps, just water. And then just do that with the brush, just make sure the colour has come off. And that was white, so that's not a big deal. And But I have got another brush here which I've left. Um, I'm not sure that's gone hard, but I'll give that a bit of a, a rinse as well. It's not good to let it dry hard, I forgot all about this brush. Not good at all. But it's, it seems to be coming off. So, this is a very versatile brush, not an expensive one. But yeah, it's good. I'm going to have to. It's a whole croft. There we go. I'm going to have to give that a. Let that sit there maybe for a minute. I'll show you something else that I like to use. Now these are cotton buds. The ones that women use to fix their makeup. Say, oh, now why would you need anything like that? <clears throat> well, when I do my oil paint especially, if I make a mistake, that is a very good tip to use. That's one end of it. And these are good quality ones, not the $2 ones. And that's also handy there. I could dip it in water in this for, for the acrylic if I want to, or dip it in um, a solution that's going to reactivate the acrylic paint. And I can just touch up, say I've gone over a line or something, I can touch it up. And that makes that job just that little bit easier. So here's another tip for me. I'm using Atelier Unlockable um, Tissue, Unlockable Acrylic Paint. That's a Series 2. Now there are higher series, of course, than that available, but that's a Series 2 and I'm quite happy with that. Now if I want to unlock <coughs> um, the paint when it's become dry, I can use this unlocking formula. So that's Atelier as well. I'll just show you how the sky is coming along. So I think that sky is pretty good. I might just leave it like that for now and uh, I might go back to it uh, once I've got a bit more colour on my canvas. I want to show you these colours um, that I'm planning to use. This is called Quinac Cridone Red Violet. It's a Series 3. And I've just got a bit of titanium white. Uh, but look, that's uh, you can't probably see that as well um, through the video, but it is a beautiful colour. So I'm going to try using that and see how I go. Okay, so that's the... Um, red violet colour coming up. Now I'm going to try using this. Now, quinacridone, magenta and that looks beautiful as well so I'll just see if that's going to work uh, on this particular page as well. Okay, these are the two colours that I've been using on uh, 
one of the figures in this painting and that seems to be working fine. We've got a bit of a light uh, shade going there um, with the help of the titanium white and then something to contrast um, the light and the dark. I want to show you another trick that I've that I use. Um, I'm using my, uh, it's all rubbed off, but this is another uh, very good sable brush. This is uh, a double zero. Now what I've done, oh, sorry about that, <coughs> what I've done is I'm using the Atelier Unlocking Formula and I've just put a few drops, you can just see that there, a few drops onto my Stay Wet palette. There you go, just there. Now, it's got a little bit of colour, but that's okay. And I'm using that to create some detail in my painting. Now, that's very hard to do with acrylics. It's great and easier, much easier to do with oils. But um, this is a way of um, helping the um, acrylic paint to just... Um, blend a little bit better and create um, more of a three-dimensional look so rather than just flat so that's the little trick um, I'm doing now using the brush the bottle says to spray it onto your painting but I think that is really not the right way to do it because if you've got a painting with a lot of detail um, as I've got here spraying your painting is just going to make a big mess so this is working fine for me. I'm using, I am using a very fine brush and a sable brush at that, but this is working very well. Very pleased with it. As you can see, um, the little trick that I've just shown you is working quite well. I, I'm very pleased with uh, how I'm getting, I'm able to put in this much detail um, considering I am using acrylic. Uh, the only good thing about acrylic, as far as I am concerned, is that it does dry quick. Um, with acrylics, the only thing I think is good about it, really, is that it dries quickly. So, um, being away, or as I am, on a holiday, I don't want to be taking back a canvas that's uh, been done in oils, because that will take quite some time to dry, and I probably wouldn't get it home safely. So that's why I'm using acrylics today. Now I'm going to try these other two colours that I've got here. I've got Cadmium Red Light and I've got Naphthol Crimson. So I'm going to have a go using those colours. They look brilliant. Um, so I've got a bit of a difference between the lighter red and the darker red. So I can use them uh, to shade and to lighten. Okay, so these colours have worked out really well. Um, I've used the interactive uh, unlocking formula, just a few drops um, on the uh, Stay Wet palette. And you can almost use it as a watercolour. Not exactly like a watercolour, but very similar to a watercolour. And um, what I also did was use the darker, uh, they're actually purples, but they worked well with, uh, with these two reds to create light and dark to get uh, more of a 3D effect. Okay, now I'm gonna try a cadmium orange. Cadmium orange. This is a series four. And I've already got a little bit of it here on my Stay Wet palette and I will incorporate that with those um, purples and the reds and let's go. Now I'll show you what I'm planning to do. I've got two different shades here, I don't know if you can see that, What the orange and then that red, the bright lighter red which would be this one here that's the brighter red and, uh, and there's the orange All right so what I'm going to do is I've got a few drops here of the um, unlocking formula 
and I'm just going to dip the brush in that and I'm going to um, get that wet again, unlock it and then I'm going to blend it in. So if you can see that I'm just going to unlock that bit there. Okay, um, I don't know if you can see on this video but I've blended it in and then I've gone over it again with a little bit more of the orange um, just here to create light, more light. That will be worked on again but that's the blended in. With acrylics it's hard to do that so that's a way, a little trick that you can use to get around that problem. Now, <coughs> I want to introduce another colour to aid in the contrast um, that needs to be, that, I'll, well, that I'm aiming to achieve. So I'm going to try using this Indian Yellow and that's a Series 2. So there it is there next to the orange and there is quite a contrast between the two. So I may use a combination of both of them. But um, I'll try it straight first and see how that works. Okay, I'm just going to show you what I've just done. The camera come into focus. Hmm. So we're looking at this area here. I don't know if you can see, but there are, it's gone from a dark, which is uh, to a light, and the way I've achieved that is by using the orange, and I've also used this red, okay, and that lighter red, and then I've done that little trick with the unlocking formula, and uh, just dipped the brush in that a bit, and started from the back here which was a more of a solid colour and then worked my way down to bring it lighter this way. I apologise for the camera, it's, I don't think it's focusing properly but I hope uh, you're able to see what I'm trying to explain. Okay so that's the um, blending I've done so far. And um, I don't know if you can see the difference in the shading. You may not be able to with this camera, so yeah, that, that's uh, working out very well using the unlocking formula, but just putting a few drops on my stay wet canvas. Okay, I've um, <clears throat> done a little bit more work on this painting. I'm going to introduce another colour, green. Uh, there's a permanent green light, series 2, and permanent sap green, series 2. Okay, and there, there they are there, the, um, the light green which is the permanent green light and the permanent sap green which is a few shades darker so that can give me contrast there if I need it. Okay, that's how the two greens are working out together at the moment. So I'm going to keep developing um, those two colours and uh, so far I'm happy with it. Okay, I want to give you an idea of how much uh, water I put into my Stay Wet palette. I've got a, a jug of water there. I've already poured one jug in uh, and I'm about to put in the rest of uh, this second jug. It's very muggy here in Marimbula and it has dried out my Stay Wet palette quite a lot. So I don't want to have my paints go all dry on me. So I'm going to just put another jug of water and just give it a bit of a press. It's still 
maybe it even needs a little bit more water. Okay, look, I'll see how that goes. I'm going to put the three sheets of baking paper back on top. There we go. And hopefully that will save my paint. Okay, now <clears throat> I've started on the skirt, but I'm going to start working on uh, this dress here. So I've got my palette knife. <clears throat> I love this particular palette knife because it's uh, just nice. It's nice and small, and um, I use this for a lot of things. So I'm going to make uh, a bit of a lavender colour with white and um, this red here that I showed you yesterday. So it's still nice and wet, and it's making a really nice pale lavender. Okay, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a few drops of my, I'll show you again, the unlocking formula. And hopefully that will keep the paint workable for a bit longer. I just need to mix that in. I'll get my palette knife. I've added a bit more white. Work that in. And that should work. Okay, that's how the um, lavender has come out by mixing that um, magenta. So that looks good, and I will keep working on that, and uh, I'm happy with it. Okay, I really like how that colour is coming out. Now, I do like the naphthol crimson. See if you can get that into focus. Okay, I'm having trouble with this camera today. No, it's not going to focus. Okay, well, it's the um, Naphthol Crimson. And there it is. There, I've just put a little bit on. My, on my um, Stay Wet palette and there's also a little bit of white. I'm going to mix mix up a little bit of the Naphthol Crimson with the white to get a different if, um, strength of that colour. Okay, I'll show you how I achieved this colour here. I've used the cadmium orange and the naphthol crimson. And what I did was put some naphthol crimson on my baking paper. And I've added a few drops of uh, the unlocking formula. And mixed that up with my um, spatula, with my... Um, Okay, with that, and I've got the orange there next to it. But first of all, I I did the areas with um, that I wanted covered with that um, crim naphthol crimson, and then I've unlocked it by just brushing a bit of the unlocking formula over uh, the areas where I wanted to highlight with a bit of the orange, and. Uh, and that's coming up quite well. There's a bit of work still to do, but uh, that's a nice little trick. Okay, now I'll show you how I've used these two colours again <coughs> in the shoes. And I've started with the orange first, and then I've grabbed a little bit of the naphthol crimson that I prepared earlier, which is um, that one there. And just started from the back end here and blended it from the back end here and blended it to create a dark shadow here because the light is coming from this side from the left okay and uh, so the light on the left and the dark on the right okay 
I'm going to pack up now. I'm just going to show you how the painting's going. So it's progressing. <laughs>